Welcome to the Body Smart Book Club, where we share the best of what we've read. Today we're talking about chapter six in Matt, Fitz Matt Fitzgerald's book, 8020 Running, which is all about monitoring and controlling intensity. So lately we've, you know, we've been talking about 8020 Running, which is 80% of our workouts at low intensity and 20% of our workouts at high intensity. So this is going to be all about how we can monitor that and do that correctly. So our three points are going to be perceived effort heart rate and pace. And by combining all three of these things during our training, we'll get the best results when it comes to monitoring, monitoring our intensity. Which is what we want, right? We're always mm -hmm. looking for, for the best to, to give you guys. Um, and so again, just re reiterating that point that, that perceived effort, heart rate, pace, like those are really great metrics on their own, but each of them has its own drawbacks. And so, like you said, if we combine all of those, we can we can mitigate a lot of those drawbacks and, and get the best that each has to offer. So I love that. For sure, for sure. So point number one is perceived effort. What is perceived effort? So basically is how hard are you trying or how hard are you not trying? <laughs> so, I like it, I like it. So, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how hard are you working? And this has nothing to do with your lungs are burning or you're cramping or the pain you're feeling in your feet. It's just all about how hard do you feel like you're pushing yourself? Yeah, which is going to change day to day, um, which yeah. actually is is part of what makes it such a good metric is it's very is it's tied to how we're feeling. Um, and so um, it's a great way to be able to check in with ourself uh, during during training, during anything that we're doing, any, any of the exercise, um, because there's going to be some days that we feel stellar, right? We feel 10 out of 10 and, and we can hit it really hard. Um, but there's other days that we're not going to be doing so well, right? Whether it's poor sleep, um, you know, maybe getting sick or just for whatever maybe reason. Maybe ate a giant burrito. burrito. Oh man, been there. Yeah. Mm, delicious. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so all those things, right? Like there's so many different things that, that affect um, how we perceive effort um, that if we kind of let that govern be the, the overarching governor, right? Like um, of, of how we're managing intensity, um, then we don't end up overdoing in the long term, right? I think one of the philosophies that, that we live by, right, is is live to play another day, live to fight another day. Don't burn yourself out so much that you can't go back and, and, and do something the next day or that you just end up getting injured because you push too hard. Exactly. And like Matt Fitzgerald says, you want to finish every single run with a little bit of reserve left in the tank. You want to finish every run feeling like you could have pushed it harder or you could have gone a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah, no, nice. So so you just save that up every time, right? Save that every, up every yeah. workout, that little extra. And then that's what you get to use on race day, right? Use that gas that you saved and, and put it through on race day and, exactly. and, and hit those PRs and get those goals. And that's when you can drain your tank. Any yeah. other time, don't drain your tank. Yeah, yeah, I love that. So the difference between intensity and and perceived effort. So if if you go in a long run and you base it off of intensity and you're trying to maintain the same intensity during the entire run, your perceived effort is gradually going to get go up and get harder and harder and harder. Versus if you base your run off of perceived effort and you try to keep your perceived effort at, at five out of ten the entire run, then the intensity is slowly going to go down and down and down. Like take a 100 mile race, for instance, it takes 25 to 40 hours to finish a 100 mile race because nobody can maintain, you know, a nine minute pace. I mean, unless you're a crazy elite athlete, unless you're the flash, flash you know, <laughs> yes. good old Barry Allen. Yeah, <laughs> you're not going to be able to maintain that for, for 100 miles. And most people can't even maintain 15 minutes for a full 100 miles. I would probably die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably. I'm, I'm most people. Um, no, no, I think that's great. And so that's, uh, I guess that gives us a good, good point to talk about, like when, when we should be using uh, perceived effort. Mm -hmm. And so again, like first we'll stress, like let that be kind of the overall governor of, of, of your training, right? Don't just kill yourself because you think you have to listen to your body. That's, that's the point that we want to drive home and that we're, we're we're going to drive home every episode, right? Listen, mm -hmm. listen to your body, pay attention. That being said, um, perceived effort is, is probably the best to check in with, our, with ourselves at, at the beginning of, 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 a, of a race, of a training episode, um, and kind of set that intensity. And when we do it, when we're fresh, when we're at the beginning, then we don't have to worry about that for the, the fatigue changing how we're perceiving intensity, right? So that, that right. perceived effort, that intensity kind of match up at the beginning um, and, and drops off. So, so best place to use perceived effort beginning of the training period or training, training day, right? Uh, 
whatever whatever type of run you're doing. Right, right, exactly. Okay, so yeah, basically listen to your body. <laughs> yes. Do it. Do it. Okay, <laughs> next uh, point we want to hit is heart rate. So what is heart rate? The reason we use heart rate, first of all, is because it's easy to use. There's lots of other things we can do to monitor and control intensity, but heart rate is just easy because you can just look at your watch and see what your heart rate is right now. 76 beats per minute. <laughs> <laughs> That's my, hold on, gotta check it. Oh, 86, you Oh, win. I win, woo! You win. <laughs> Our must be beating faster, oh, oh. <laughs> so it's just easy, easy to use. And, and basically, you know, the harder your skeletal muscles are working, the more oxygen you need. So the harder your heart is going to be. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a direct physiological measure of intensity because like you said, right, we're, we're running harder. Uh, our muscles need more oxygen. So our heart rate is going to go up to supply that oxygen. And so they're directly tied together, right? It's going to feel harder when you're, when you're running faster, your heart rate's gonna be, be going faster to, to accomplish the work that you need to do to, to get that workout done. Right, and this brings us to the funnest part of this entire episode, the heart rate zones. Zones! <laughs> so zones, <laughs> zones one through five. That's, that's what he talks about in the book is he breaks all of his workouts up into five different zones. So you have zone one and two, which is your low intensity, zone three, Three, which is kind of your black hole. We'll talk about how, you know, it's okay to go in and out of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then you have zone four and five, which is your high intensity stuff. Yeah. And so being able to break heart rate into those zones works really nice for, for setting up a whole different type of, uh, or a whole set of, of, of different runs, right? Whether it's your foundation runs, tempo runs, sprints, hill workouts, um, that's really where they come into play. And training according to those is um, ends up being really great for, for improving performance in the long run and and training in a way that um, is tied to to your body, right? Again, like we talked about, heart rate is a direct physiological measure of intensity. And so when we're using those zones to set our training and set our type of runs, um, it ends up being tied to what our body's doing and how our body works, which is a plug for metabolic testing. Woo Yay! <laughs> So metabolic testing is basically awesome. Have you ever seen, you know, the movie of the athlete run on the treadmill with the mask on his face? Well, that's what we can do for you. And this is so we can establish your specific heart rate zones because everybody's body is different. And the reason this is so important is because if you're literally one or two um, beats per minute out of the zone that you're trying to be in, it can literally mess up your entire workout. Yeah, yeah when we're talking about intensity, right? A, a low versus moderate, a moderate versus high, because we're getting different effects with those different types of intensity. And so the book offers a couple different ways to, to kind of set those heart rate zones. Um, the problem is there's just some some error, some pretty big error on, on, on either side of the thing. It works as a well enough metric, but really to dial it in, if you're looking to, to train according to what your body needs, according to how your body works, then then specific testing like that right whether it be metabolic testing like we do um, other people do blood light blood lactate testing things like that but mm -hmm. but unless you're using um, a direct physiological measure that, that's taking into what your body does and how it's responding um, then you're just not going to be able to dial in uh, that training is as good as you might otherwise be able to do right so you can't really trust all these oh this equation or this this number minus your age like yeah. it just doesn't they're great there's, there's a lot of error yeah there's they're great mm -hmm. rough mes metrics but they're they're based on kind of that bell curve right and so there's while well, there's a lot of people in the middle right there's a lot of people still that fall on either side of that and so being able to really dial it into what you need um, is ideal in 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 making a an awesome training plan and helping you hit those PRs, helping you reach your goals, um, and helping you build a, a training plan that again takes your body into account, um, which is also important for reducing injury risk, right? Because if you can control the for intensity sure. according to how your body measures that and, and how you respond, um, then you can keep it where it needs to be and and uh, avoid some of those fallbacks that come from training too often at too high of an intensity. Exactly. So if you have any more questions about metabolic testing or if you're interested in doing it yourself, comment below or contact one of us and we'll get you set up on something. Yeah, yeah. It's super fun. It's really cool. We love, we love it. We love talking about it. So please uh, mm -hmm. hit us up if you have any questions. For, for sure. sure. For sure. For sure. Yeah. 
Okay, back on to heart rate. Another <laughs> thing we want to hit on yes. is something called cardiac lag. This is really important in determining when it's good to use heart rate and when it's not good mm -hmm. to use heart rate. So this is what cardiac lag is. When, when our body is working harder, our heart needs to beat harder to give our muscles the oxygen that they need, mm -hmm. right? So how, how would you explain yeah. that? <laughs> no, 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 for sure, for sure. So, um, right, so our muscles are working, we're running harder, heart mm -hmm. rate's going up. It's not instantaneous, right? It's not like, oh, I'm running faster, bam, my heart rate's all of a sudden 180. Right, it, it takes, takes time, time mm -hmm. for your heart rate mm -hmm. to, yeah. to get yeah. up there. So it takes time for the heart rate to get up there, and it also takes time for the heart rate to go back down once you reduce the intensity. Which right. is, you know, which for using it as a as a training metric and an intensity metric, if you're constantly going up and down and up and down in intensity, that really messes with things as far as using heart rate as that metric. Um, and so that's really the the kind of drawback, the downfall to using that for every type of intensity run. Right. And and if you're a runner, maybe you've experienced this where you run up a hill really quick and you're like, oh man, like what's my heart rate? And you're like, seriously, 120 beats? You I, was, so hard. I was freaking way harder than that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, watch. Yeah. So so for example, <laughs> say you do, you know, a 30 second sprint, your heart rate isn't going to get up and, and your goal is zone five. Let's say your goal is to get up to 180 beats per minute. So you do a 30 second sprint and your heart rate isn't going to get up to that 100 beats, 180 beats per minute until the end of that 30 seconds, if that. Yeah. And then say you have a two minute cool down after that, and your goal is to go all the way down to zone one for your cool down. Your heart rate may get down to zone one in that two minutes, and it and it may not. So the trick is when you're doing high intensity to just run as fast as as fast as you should to where your heart rate would have got up mm -hmm. to 180 mm -hmm. beats per minute, yeah. or it would have gone down to 100 beats per minute. So this is when perceived effort is is better. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so there's, um, and, and we won't go into this here, you can check out the book. He offers a really good, uh, let's call it like, a, it's, it's a table, a little map of let's set perceived effort along with heart rate, along with pace, which is our last point. Yay. Great segue, Mark. <laughs> wow, there you go. <laughs> um, but no, like, I, I, pace is, is definitely an important one. It's probably the one that you're waiting for because, all, you know, that's like the end all be all for running. This right? is what why is my we pace? run, yeah. right? To yeah. get the, the fast pace. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And so, pace. I have a love hate relationship with pace, right? Yeah, I think. We I all think do. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it can it can be a runner's best friend, and it can be their worst enemy. Mm -hmm. um, the nice thing about pace is that it's it's disassociated from uh, those physical measures, right? Like the physiological measures, like we talked, heart rate and perceived effort. Right. Um, and so it, it, it's it's not so much an input; it's an output. And so um, it can be really great for improving our performance. It's it's really the overall performance metric, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're not asking each other what was your heart rate, how, what was your effort. It's oh, what was your pace? Oh, mine was this. Well, mine was this. Oh, but mine was this. Oh man, I had this awesome pace, right? Like that's. And so from that effect, it can be really, really motivating in helping you improve and get better and get better. Um, but when you're constantly trying to, to chase that, right, Ch chase that next pace and go after that, and you stop paying attention to those other measures, right, you stop listening to your perceived effort, you stop paying attention to heart rate, then again, you end up putting yourself into too often, uh, too high intensity, right, going into more of that moderate intensity or even staying in that high intensity, and you put your body through too much and, and you end up counteracting a lot of the work that you put in um, to get where you want to be. Exactly. So basically perfect recipe for burnout. Yeah. yeah. You don't ever, when you go out and do a run every day, it's not try to get a, a better pace today. And then the next day I'm going to try to get a better pace than yesterday. And then I'm going to try to get a better pace than yesterday. Like we said, we want to use heart rate and perceived effort most of the time. Pace is a great indicator of, am I training right or am I not yes. training right? Is my pace naturally going down or is it not changing at all? That's what we really want to pay attention to. Another time when it's appropriate to use pace is during interval training, like high, mm -hmm. high intensity. Mm -hmm. Say you, you want to do you know, four 400 meter sprints. Start out with, with perceived effort and say, I'm going to do these sprints at a perceived effort of seven out of 10. Pay attention to your pace. Um, say it takes you, you know, a minute, 30 seconds to run 400 meters. And then whenever you do that workout once a week or, or every other week, then you can try to beat that pace every yeah. time. Yeah. Um, but uh, when it comes to your long runs, especially 
you number one based on pace perceived effort and heart rate is what you really want to pay attention yeah, to. yeah it's a lot easier um to to say hey like let's stay below this heart rate or stay within this heart rate range right it's a lot easier for our minds to do that than to say stay below this pace because again that's kind of the end all be all right that's oh man i got this pace we're always trying to beat that and so i think it's it's hard to do that and so yeah how you said use pace great and i i think just to reiterate again right that is a great great way to see how you're doing because if you're training your training and nothing's happening with your pace or it's getting worse and worse like then that's an indication that that something needs to change right and, and that's when um you know it's, it's a good time to have that conversation right like what are what are some training errors what's going on what's happening that, that this pace isn't going down that we're not improving because again that that should be a natural part of of this type of training um the the high volume mm, weighted more towards low intensity is really built and designed to to fine tune our bodies into to efficient racing and running machines exactly exactly so there you have it those are the three things perceived effort heart rate and pace so we'll end this episode by just kind of summarizing everything that that we talked about so basically what, what did you want to add here yeah yeah so um let's let's just hit them one by one right perceived effort so really great at setting that giving us that set point for intensity at the beginning of our exercise becomes can become less effective um, the longer that we go due to fatigue but again a great overall measure uh, kind of overarching all of our workouts how are we feeling listen to your body um, to heart rate right so really nice because it's a physiological measure tied directly to intensity and so um, really great to use on those long run throughout the duration of the long runs great for zones one two and three mainly three. yep mm -hmm. um, again in those higher zones we run into the issue of cardiac lag right our our heart rate being a little bit behind uh, the intensity that we're doing and, and being difficult to use as a measure for that um, and then last pace so really great for improving our performance right for for seeing how our performance is going right is it getting better is it getting worse is it staying the same um, and then and then using that in those higher intensity workouts to to measure intensity for sure and i i want to challenge you guys Ooh. so close. don't be ashamed to tell people what your pace is stick to the 80 20 training and don't be ashamed to say i ran a 10 minute mile pace today don't be ashamed of that don't be ashamed of i ran a 15 minute mile pace today and then tell your friends why you know why did you run so slow 80 20 80 20 running let me tell you all about it you know <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Don't be ashamed, like do do your training the, the right way and don't be ashamed of it. Definitely, well, and I think that's such a great point, right? Like where, where those paces a badge of honor because when you're, you know, when you uncouple your training from what other people think of you or how other people performed, then you can dive into to making it enjoyable and, and chasing your goals, not chasing other people's goals, not chasing other people's exactly. dreams, not chasing other people's times, but really working towards uh, having better fitness and, and hitting those goals that are really valuable to you and, and show you that you're improving and, and getting better. And I think that ultimately becomes more meaningful. So you can say proudly like, yeah, I had a 15 minute pace and guess what? I feel great today and I felt great the yeah. next day and I can run and I can run and and i'm doing well i'm not getting injured like i was before like that's that's beautiful because that's what we want right like keep like let's let's keep you on the road keep running keep doing what you love um do it in a way that's sustainable that that day in and day out that you can do that and, and that it allows you to do everything that you love not just not just running but but chasing fitness in such a way that uh that it becomes a lifestyle right because you've chosen to train that way you've chosen to live in that way then Hey, I'm going to go hike this, you know, 13 mile peak today, or, you know, I'm going to do, do this or that, right? Without thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. It just, it just becomes uh, natural and easy and, and we're not constantly dealing with injury after injury, um, which makes just training and running and exercise and fitness way more fun. And that's, I think that's the ultimate goal to live a fit, a healthy life um, from, from the time you're young to the time you're old. And, and I think that's completely possible. Um, when we when we dial in training in the right way and we treat our bodies well and we listen to our bodies um, and, and give them what they need. Exactly. And here's the thing. If you're the guy who's going to train right and let everyone pass you on the training runs, you're going to be passing them when race day comes. Bam! So, Mic drop! Mic drop! <laughs> Out! <laughs> 
All right, well, that summarizes our episode here. If you guys have any questions, just drop something in the comments below, and we will see you guys next week. All right, awesome. Okay. Pop! <laughs> <laughs>